Hey, good evening, everyone. I want to welcome to our 102nd workshop. I've got a title tonight that uh, I wonder if I maybe bit off a little bit more I could chew on this one. Uh, it's the curses of counterfeit Christianity. I almost don't even know where to start. Uh, you know, it's like the occult. You know, years ago here in the church, when Pastor Roy would do a mass deliverance, um, when it came to the era of the occult, you know, it was the Ouija board. It was, you know, Grandma who took a pinch of salt and, you know, threw it over her shoulder and, and uh, you know, just a few other items. Today, the occult is everywhere. It, it's permeated music. Uh, it's permeated the churches. The churches are just, just, just wide open uh, for the occult. Uh, many use occult techniques uh, to bring people in or to get, you know, to get people. Uh, and as the saying here goes, you know, if you have to pet them to get them, you're going to have to tweak them to keep them. And there's just no time for that. Um, and so counterfeit Christianity, where, where do we go with that? Um, there's teachings in our book room uh, from old about uh, the, uh, and these people are still very strong today. In fact, all of these things that uh, I've talked about in the past and a few things that I'm going to be talking about tonight are still coming together. Uh, and they may not like each other. They may not agree with each other. They may not even know each other. But they all, even though they may be this far apart, they all say the same thing. They use a few different words, and uh, um, they use a few different techniques, but they're still all saying the same thing, and that is that there's an ecumenical movement, and there's a thing called the emergent church that is very strong today. Uh, and uh, a guy by the name of Bob Bell is the uh, so-called leader of the emergent church, and, and uh, a couple months ago he came out and said, well, you know, we shouldn't have any problem with homosexuality. Uh, and then a week later, he married his partner. And now this is the guy that's in charge of the emergent church. And, and where this is all going, um, you know, the word antichrist, it doesn't mean against, it means instead of. And instead of Christ, there, you know, you can have the name Jesus on your church. And you, can, you can praise Jesus and, you know, do whatever people do in the church, but you can't believe in him in his deity. Uh, for those that uh, listen to uh, contemporary Christian music, um, Doug Hemphill, I don't know who he is, I, I, was just, I just read this uh, yesterday. Um, now this guy, he, uh, he's in his 40s, he grew up in the church, uh, Southern Baptist Church, and uh, apparently he's very popular, the article said, in, in, in that type of music. Uh, and he says, you're a fool uh, if you believe in the tenets of the Trinity or in the deity, he used that word, deity, of Jesus Christ. Now, this is a Christian singer. And these people, with their music, have infiltrated the church. And it really comes back to the pastors uh, who are allowing these things to begin with because, you know, as with everything in our society, um, somebody has to make a final decision somewhere. You know, if you, had two, if you have two heads, you've got a, mon you've got a monster. Uh, and so it really comes down to the pastors. It doesn't matter what the boards or the deacons or other people say. He makes the final decision for the most part. Uh, and they allow these things in the church. I, I was in a church a while back where uh, the guitarist was, this was before the service, he was tuning up to Hotel California. In the church? See, the church needs to be the last place, the last place that the devil should feel at home. And yet the devil has overrun the church, and he's brought in damnable heresies. He's brought in doctrines from hell. The church is stuffed to the rafters with unsaved people. You know, the whole message of salvation uh, today is being lost in, in this, this um, cosmic type of Christ. Uh, because you can't, you can't have a personal relationship when the whole world is going to a collective, when it's all going to a group. This individual worship that we do uh, will be actually, we'll probably see it in our lifetime uh, that the type of Christianity we're used to will be outlawed. 
and it'll be outlawed because of uh, hate speech. It'll be outlawed because of prejudice. I mean, who knows? Because the truth doesn't matter anymore. Nobody seems to care about the truth. But this is what the Word of God has to say about it. Over in Galatians chapter 1, if you would turn there real quick, um, you've probably read this a hundred times. You probably know what I'm going to say about it. But let's take, a, let's take a real close look at it for just a second. And uh, we're going to see something that is just, just shocking. I mean, it, it just jumps out at us. Uh, and it should shake us to our foundation. Uh, because God uh, means what he says. And he says what he means. And we all have an opinion and a view, you know. And we're entitled to our opinions and views as long as our facts. We're not entitled to different facts. Okay, our truth has to be the same. And Paul talked about this. Um, he says in verse 8 of Galatians 1, he says, Though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, any other gospel, look at the, denom the uh, denominational system. The devil set that thing up to effectively keep the body of Christ separated. The body of Christ can never come together with all the doctrinal differences that they have. Oh, they can be friends here, they can be friends there, but, but they can't have unity of the spirit or unity of faith because they're all over the place. And so Paul says, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than the one that we've preached, uh, let them be accursed. Look up that word. It means to be cut off and sent to hell. And in the very next verse, he says, and as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than the one that you've received, let him be cut off and sent to hell. Wow. Now, the deity of Christ, as this, uh, uh, as this contemporary Christian uh, singer, uh, if you would turn to John 7, verse 38. John 7, 38. The scripture tells us now, this isn't my view, this isn't my opinion. This is what the word of God tells us. It tells me, it tells you, and then we need to act accordingly to it. The Lord's doing an individual work in every single one of our lives. But when it comes to his truth, it's not a matter of, of multiple choice for us. It's not a matter of how we feel about something. God left us this very, very important book because when we follow this thing, we're, we're like the earthworm going through a mile of mud, and we come out on the other side clean. No matter how much persecution, no matter what kind of problems can come into our lives, as long as we're following the Word of God, then we're going to be okay. The problem today is that the Scripture says that the curse causeless shall not come. Well, we give it cause all the time because we, we bring error and false doctrine into our homes. We bring it into our lives. We bring it into our churches. We take it to work. It, it, it surrounds us. It travels with us. Well, you know, I like this type of music. I like that. I, I, I understand. I get it too. You know, I, I have different bends in certain ways. But if the scripture tells us that we need to avoid things, then that's what we need to do. And in our own strength, we can't do that. But with the Lord, we can. But if it's not working in our lives, then there's a blockage there. There's something that's hindering the Lord from moving. I can confidently say that, that I, the majority of the churches in our country, on any given Sunday or, or midweek service, Jesus isn't there. He, he's not allowed in the door. They've got a program. They've got, they've got all the committees. They've got it all done. I, I've been, I, I got a chance to know uh, uh, a big church and to see how, how it operates. It's a business. A pastor loves the Lord, but our words are not enough. It's our actions. There's an old saying, it doesn't, it, it doesn't really matter what a man says, it's what he believes. It just takes us a little while to find out what he believes because we all have this personality and we say and we speak a certain way and in front of certain people because that's how we want people to know us, to recognize us. But what's behind that is what it came out in one of the testimonies, is all that rottenness, is all that rebellion. It, it's all that stuff that, that, that we struggle with every single day that we don't want people to see. 
And when the and when the churches shut down, and the churches, you know, the church was hated years ago because it convicted the world of sin. The church is still hated today, but because of its hypocrisy. We've lost our salt. Many countries send missionaries to the United States. John 7, 38, Jesus said, He that believes on me, as the Scripture has said, uh, uh, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, uh, uh, th But this spake he of the Spirit, which they had not received, uh, and they were going to. It hadn't been given out yet because Jesus wasn't glorified. So, in other words, we've got to believe as the Word of God says, not as the preacher says, not as the, the CD or the, the group or the church or our friends or our own minds. Because several times in Proverbs, it comes out in different verses, but two are exactly the same. There's a way that seems right unto us. But the ends are the ways of destruction. And, you know, we can have an opinion and a view towards something, but if we don't have the same view and opinion towards the Word of God, somebody's got a problem. Because your truth can't be different than mine. Because truth comes from God. And there aren't different truths out there for you or me or other people. There's one truth, and it's in this book. And we have to die to get to that truth. We have to say no. We have to put our foot down. We have to not go out with certain people. Uh, you know, the, the scripture tells us that we need, to, we need to be very careful of the people that we have around us because they bring problems into our lives. We, we can even see that in our own families. Well, but that person really likes me. Well, hey, you know, get some prayer. Maybe somebody else will like you. I, I don't know. I, you know, I don't, the only answer I have is from the word of God. And, and this is the only thing, as the government falls apart, as the rules change, as truth is turned upside down, like Ephraim, it was a cake half-baked, the Word of God says. It was ripe on one side, and it was raw on the other side. And truth is upside down now in our country. Right is wrong, wrong is right, left is right. People say whatever. You've got this group, all these special interest groups. And by the way, they're in the church too. All these special interest groups, the church is so divided, just like the country is. But the church shouldn't be divided. We should be able to come together on the truth of God's word. And, and you have your culture, and I have mine, and we like this kind of food, and we like this color, and that's great. But we've got to be together on the word of God. Because your Bible doesn't say different than mine. And if it tells you one thing, it's telling me the same thing. And this is the problem today, because when the pastors, when they allow this counterfeit Christianity to come in, well, you know, this person's really okay. How do you know that? Do you read minds? Do, do we really know what's going on in somebody's life? I mean, even those people we know, do we really know what's going on behind closed doors? No, we don't. Well, I just know that person's a good person. How do we know that? Well, the Lord showed me, but he showed me something different. And we've got all these divisions. So in this verse, Jesus tells us that he that believes on me, as the word of God has said, then out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water in reference to what? Salvation. So we've got to believe on the word of God as the word of God says. And the only way we're going to find out what the Word of God says is to read it ourselves. And because I know all the preachers have good, well, I don't know about all, but I know a lot of them have good intentions, and churches have good intentions, but good intentions, look at the world today. We've got to find out what God is speaking to us about from His Word. It's, it, it's so critical, as we just read over in Galatians chapter 1. If there's another gospel out there, we need to run from these things. We need to leave churches that we, that we go to. Oh, well, where am I going to go? Ask the Lord. I, I don't know. But I'd rather be where the Lord wants me to. I, you know, I used to be a survivalist. 
and I had all you know a year's food and and you know thank I don't do that stuff anymore. I, you know if I have a few days here and there and just in case there was a, a catastrophe going on, because I'm comfortable being wherever the Lord wants me to be. Can we say that as Christians? So there's so much superstition we've allowed into the church so many different teachings I just had a conversation uh, yesterday with about the Nephilim oh my gosh and and don't think that that's a small item because that ties right in with this new Christ that will be allowed in the church because see the new Christ will allow Islam see the new Christ will allow homosexuality you know, judge not lest you be judged. The, the new Christ will allow many things that the Word of God outlaws. And uh, the, the Bible code, all these, these isms that for the last 20 years that have come down into the church are all coming together. Just because we didn't read the book or we don't read the book or we don't agree with that doesn't mean it's gone away. You know, I, I mentioned the book, The Shack. You know how popular that thing is in the church? Go to any Christian bookstore, and they probably have more of the Shack book. And it's a, it's, a, it's a fictional tale about heaven and God. And God's in three people. It's, really, it's, it's a bizarre book. And the author will tell you, oh, no, no, it's, it's just, you know, it's a work of fiction. But they write it as if it's truth. See, they say one thing, but then they do another. And that's the eternal problem in the church, is that we have instability. Why? Because we brought in all these things, different people, different groups, uh, um, colors, music, uh, entertainment. Oh my gosh, entertainment. Why should we really have to be entertained in the church? We can go anywhere at any time in our lives to be entertained. You can go to Six Flags, but watch out for that uh, roller coaster ride. Poor lady. I hope she knew the Lord. But the word amuse means to get one not to think. So should we bring amusements into the church? Well, we've got to have the dancers. We've got to have the flags. Uh, you know, we've got to have all these things that the church has, has brought in, the placebos, the, the, the Trojan horses, because the demons just follow right behind it. And when the church doesn't know anything about deliverance, it doesn't know anything about spiritual warfare, the church is stuffed to the rafters with demons also. It's no wonder that the Lord gets anything done, at least in our country today, with Christianity. You say, well, you sure are negative. No, you've not heard anything yet. I'm a lot worse than this. This is, brothers and sisters, we ought to be screaming from the rooftops about the error and false doctrines being taught by Benny Hinn. By, by Copeland, by T.D. Jakes, okay? I mean, these, just to name a few. These are, just, these are just a few people. Error and false doctrine. Well, I like that person. Well, I'm glad you do, but they're wrong on their doctrine. And I can put my Bible next to the things that they teach and show that it's wrong. And you don't have to worry about me, but one day the Lord's going to break into our lives and he's going to say, son, daughter, this is what my word says. This is what you're doing. Now you choose. Do you know how many are going to choose the Bible? Very few. Do you know how many people are walking away from Christ today? Do you know that the youth programs, it's, it's a high in the 90s percent, that when the youth hit 21, they don't want a thing to do with church. They don't want to th now, I know we all go through, you know, our growing phases, and, and I'm sure some of that's in there. But the, the millions, the multi-millions that are thrown in, the youth, in these youth programs, well, most of the youth programs are just babysitting places for people. And the things that the churches let the youth get away with, and the youth leaders, and, and, and the things that are covered up. And now we've got yoga to contend with in the church from the East. Uh, where, what are people thinking? 
Well, they're not. Well, why aren't they thinking? One of two reasons. They're not reading the Word of God, or they've got spirits of deception. And, and that's going to be talked about uh, during our conference. And we're all susceptible to this. I mentioned earlier about the idolatry I had in my life that I didn't have any idea about. I didn't have a clue. And when the Lord showed me, I was like, wow. I, I mean, and I looked at it, I thought, wow, I, I really have a lot of idolatry in my life. But I would have never thought that the week prior. So, you know, the, word, the very word deception means we don't know. And the church is stuffed to the rafters with deception. And there are good men that come out of Bible college. There are good men that come out of, out of seminary. But they're so smart. And, and the seminaries teach them how to do everything that God can kind of help, but he can't lead the way. Because they know what to do. They know what to teach. They know their theology. They know their eschatology. They, they know all the theologies out there. Because they were taught that. But sometimes, things that were taught are wrong. I want to I go through a series of, of things that, that happen, that bring counterfeit Christianity uh, into our lives. These are, these are, some of these things, can, we can only get help in these areas through deliverance. Because there's a whole bunch of demons that are working behind the scenes that we can't see, smell, hear, taste, or feel. And if we have no spiritual discernment, or we don't apply uh, the, the fruits of the Spirit and the seven spirits of God and other things that the Word of God says, I mean, why would we? What do we need the armor of God for? The dollar store is still open, and Walmart's open, and, and the restaurants are open, and the car starts, and the air conditioner ho hopefully you know, is working. I know we have problems with this a little bit here and there. You know, hard times to us in the United States as a Christian is having a window unit instead of central air. Yet the majority of the world doesn't have air conditioning. Let's look at some of these. One of the major things, and this was something that I was at one time, and the Lord delivered me from this, and, and I, I, I spotted in my life, and I'm very careful about it, you know, because basically how we're born is how we die. We can get deliverance in our life in the weak areas in our life that help us to bolster those things up, help us to protect those areas, we need to strengthen the good things, and we need to make sure that the bad things in our lives, the bends that we have, because we're all made different. We all have different bends in our lives. The Word of God won't take that bend away. Remember, when we have problems or we, we do something wrong, we're going to go through problems. But what it is is that the Lord takes us through that. He can change the situation, but most of the time, He doesn't. We reap what we sow, but he takes us through that. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. But, you know, have you ever met people who are just grumpy? And they, they can get prayer until Jesus comes back, and they're grumpy people. It's, it's just their bend. But they can, they can utilize the Word of God to take that grumpiness and make it something other than being negative. And that's up to us as individuals. But one of the things that, that is just, and this is resident in so many people, especially in leadership, and that is being a people pleaser. Because if we have this problem in our lives, this is a curse. The title of the message, Curses, or curses of, of, of uh, Counterfeit Christianity. If you have a leader, if you have somebody that is in authority that is a people pleaser, all bets are off. That person's going to be all over the place. Well, you know, I just think that person's just, you know, they're just too judgmental, too critical. Well, you know, if they're judging from the Word of God, that's why I don't mind mentioning people's names that teach error and false doctrine. You know, that charlatan that we have not too far from here, Steve Muncy. The guy's just, he's just, he's a carnival barker. He ought, he ought to be in a circus calling people in. If I've offended you, I'm sorry, but 
You know, check his doctrine out. I don't, I'm not even sure that these people, do you know that Kenneth Copeland says with his mouth and my ears that it wasn't the physical death on the cross that paid the price of sin. Unquote, unquote. Really? Because that's what my Bible says. In fact, if we don't believe that, I bet we're still lost in our sin. You know, Satan has ministers of righteousness out there. And if we are anywhere in the end times, is it any wonder that these people would probably be around us sometime? Maybe in our churches? But what a great place for error and evil to hide. Of, of all the places on earth. You know, look at the pedophilia that goes on in the Catholic Church. Who would have thought that those priests would be pedophiles? Well, you know, if you don't, if you put the restrictions on them that the Catholic Church does, that's what you're going to get. And they're going to hide there. What better place to hide? Just stuffed to the rafters with that stuff. The same thing in the church. How much evil resides in church? Over in Ezekiel 13, you don't have to turn there. Uh, check that out sometime. Find out about the witchcraft. Find out about the, the horrible, evil things that were going on in the temple. And when God took Ezekiel in the vision into the temple, he showed him. He says, let me show you how bad things are. And Ezekiel says, wow. He says, yeah, you think that's bad? He says, let me show you something else. Even to the point where there was murder going on. See, we just don't know how things are. But this book tells us not only how things are, but how we need to react or act. You and me. I had somebody write me not too long ago or do something, and, and boy, I mean, they chewed me out. I, I didn't have time to even, I didn't even know about the problem. And they chewed me out really good. I wrote them back, and I said, I, I am just truly sorry that this, that this problem happened to you. I wish you would have let me know. I would have fixed it, and, and, I, would have, and I, would, I would have fixed it in your, in your favor. I said, but maybe with as bitey as you are, I've got the letter on my computer, and, uh, and uh, jumping to all these conclusions that, that weren't true, maybe you should get some prayer and deliverance to help you out. Because if this is the way this person reacts to a problem that I had even no idea about, what, what's our life outside of that? How are we going to be at work? Do we have a light that will shine for Jesus Christ? Or do people look at us and say, yep, just another hypocrite? You know, we'll, we'll get it one of these days. We just, we're so blessed in our country. We're so blessed with so many things. that The poorest in our country are rich compared to other places in the world. The average wage outside of the United States is $2, $2 a day. Okay. We, we ought to be jumping in front of the unsaved, begging them, begging them to come to Christ, begging them to fix, to get out of their church or to get out of the problem so that, so that they don't have to go to hell. 